Okay, so let's take a look at variables and constants. In this video series, we are going to be using Python to demonstrate all these programming techniques. Now, a variable is a memory location or named address that holds a value. We can assign different values or different types of values, such as booleans, strings, integers, etc., to these variables. Now, let's imagine we have customer as our variable. Now, that's our name for our variable, we can assign a value to this customer variable, and we can assign Reval as the customer. Now, what this does is when we run this program, nothing happens, process finished, but in memory, it's assigned our string to customer. Now, if we hover over customer, uh, we can see it's a string and it's equal to Reval. So our IDE actually helps us here. But what, how you should know that it's a string is by the single quotes. Now, what we can do here is we can print type of customer. And we can run the program again. And this print will print the value of the result for type. And type is giving us whatever data type the customer is. So it says str, short for string. Now, if we used double quotes here, note that it still comes back as a string. Now, how else can we assign a string? Python should fail here. Yep, it does know. So the only ways that you can assign a string is by single or double quotes. And we have customer equal to revolve. So we've assigned a location in memory to hold a string revolve. And we can access that from memory at any time using the name of the variable. So that is a string. What about if we wanted to use an integer or store an integer? So uh, let's use a scenario here. Reval is a customer and he wants to purchase a phone. So we know that phone cost could be an integer. So let's say the phone costs 250 pounds. So we know that right now we've used numbers to save the price of the phone and you can hover over here and it says int for integer and we can confirm this by printing out the type of a uh, variable and it says integer now our phone will cost 250 pounds we are saying this because it's a number here you can see that it was green for text or string and green for 254 integer sorry blue for integer now, if um, I wanted uh, to do an integer with quotes and I had to run execute, uh, you'll see that it says string. And it's Python's identifying this as a string because we have said it is a string by using the quotes. But remove the quotes and Python knows it's an integer again. So declaration of the value for your variables are very important. Now, let's take a look at this. You know, these days when you want to buy a phone, you have to buy the charger separately. So let's uh, get charger cost. So the charger cost might be $10.99. So £10.99 for a charger. Now, note that we used a decimal here to say that it's $10.99. Now, this is not an integer anymore. It's actually a float. So let's hover over this and it says float. So that is a different type of data. And if we run this again, we have float, just to be sure. So now, what happens if we wanted a Boolean value? Imagine we're the shop owner, and we wanted to know if the customer has purchased the phone or not. Maybe a good name for that variable could be purchased. And we can assign it to our Boolean. Now, you know that Booleans are either true or false. And all you simply have to do is type true or false in our variable. Now, if we had to find out what this is and we ran it, you'll see it comes back as bool and you can hop over and it comes back as bool. Now, Python note that it's a Boolean. It's highlighted in orange. Now, what if I did this through and ran? It fails. Now, it's important to note, again, similar to how we have a decimal point, um, we have numbers and we have quotes that ident identify those different data types. When it comes to a Boolean, it's case sensitive. So if you wanted this to be true, 
it has to be uppercase T. And if you wanted it to be false, it has to be uppercase F as well. So if we ran this, fine, and you'll see F will come back. And it says name error, name false is not defined. Now, to be clear here, what exactly is happening is that false, uh, the false is actually a name of another variable that does not exist. Because you can see Python here underlines it red, uh, this unresolved reference false, and here it says name error, name false is not defined. So um, we need to make sure that we're not referencing another variable, but we actually are assigning a Boolean. Okay, so as an exercise for yourself, I suggest you pause this video, take some time, and try to rewrite this code in Python in an editor. If you don't have PyCharm installed, you can download it. It's free. The link is in the description below, or you can use any other editor that you are comfortable with. Create some variable names and try to store different data types and just play with it, see what happens. And I think that is the best way to learn how Python works, learn how assigning variables work, and also it gets it stuck in your head. So when you come across questions, it is just a little bit easier for you to answer. Okay, so I hope you paused the video and played around with Python. If you're ready to move on, let's continue. We are now going to be talking about naming of the variables because naming is actually one of the most difficult things to do in programming. I know it looks so simple. Customer, Revolve, Phone Cost, etc. It can be simple, but it really is one of the most difficult things. And that's because you can write this code now and you'll think, oh, I know exactly what this does. But six months later, Remember, if you have hundreds of lines of code in your program, you have a whole bunch of variable names, you might forget what <laughs> you might find it really difficult to reread this code. So what you want to do as a programmer is keep it consistent and keep it simple. So let's discuss naming customer. Now, is this a good name? Yeah, it is. It's saying that it's quite clear the customer is Reval, but what would be even clearer is if we did customer name. And you can see it says Reval. Now we know that customer name will most likely be a string because it's storing Reval. We're just being a little bit clearer here. We can even take it further and we can say customer first name. That's even clearer. It says customer first name Reval. And then we can have customer last name. And we can put Governor as an example. Now you can see that that is extremely clear. We know if you read customer first name, most likely you expect it's a string, and most likely you'll know it's just the first name, and that's the piece of data that you're working with. You always want to be very clear about these things. Now, the next thing you would note is that there's a specific style that we have been following here, and it's a case called camel case. You can see it says customer first name, uh, first and then name. We start with a lowercase c for the first word, a uppercase f, and then an uppercase n. A camel case works just like that. You always start, your first word has a lowercase and the rest has uh, uppercase. And the reason for that is just to make it easier to read. Because if this was customer, first name like this, and last name like that, it just looks a lot more difficult to read. You can even use uh, something called snake case, which I really like. And well, I really like the name of it. Um, you can see that is very clear to read as well. Customer first name. Okay, so that is another option you can use. So customer, let's just uh, go back to snake case. The reason why you want to keep it to one case is because down here, let's say charge it cost. Let's say if we used snake case here and you went charge a cost and you were like, okay, cool. Now I want to know what the phone cost is. So you're just going to type out phone here and you're going to run it and it's going to break. And because you realize, oh, okay, somebody wrote this code up here. It's actually a different case. Um, it, it just, it's so much simpler if you just followed um, one case style, because remember you can have multiple variables in the tens uh, or even more. It, it, it's just, you want to keep it as simple as you can. 
Now, another thing to note when uh, creating names is that you can have customer first name and you can put, um, I don't know, what if we wanted to have, we remove this and we just had customer one. You can have numbers in your variable names. So if we had to print customer one, you'll see the program still runs. Now, can you start with a one though? No, you can't. So that's a very important distinction. Variable names do allow you to use numbers. You just can't start with one. Also, good to know, you can't use an at symbol or any sort of symbol or funny character, a special character. So if you have to use a star as an example, it doesn't like it either. So that's very important. I hope you've gained some perspective there on naming. Again, pause the video if you can, try it out and see how it works. Okay, so I hope you took some time to take a look at naming or play around with it. Now let's take a look at constants. So for me, it was very difficult to understand the difference between a variable and a constant. It just wasn't uh, clicking for me. Now, I used to think um, of a science equation because, look, variables uh, in a formula maybe um, will be different and constants will remain constant. So I started off thinking like that and I thought, okay, that makes sense. But in the uh, coding world, think of it as every time your code runs, what values will remain constant and what values might change? So imagine that this piece of code ran every time somebody or a customer tried to purchase a phone. Let's say they filled out a form and the form will, will have a uh, customer first name as an option and a uh, phone cost, charger cost. And let's ignore this for now. Imagine we are filling out this form. Now, every time the code runs to process uh, the data from the form, customer first name will be different because, I don't know, let's say me, Raval, I want to buy the phone, I fill out the form. Then maybe Tom comes along and he wants to uh, purchase the phone, he fills out the form, he wants to purchase the same phone and same charger, so these values will remain constant every time the code runs, but the name will change. So the name, customer first name, that variable will be a variable every time the code runs. So one interesting thing to note here is that Python actually does not support constants. So the way people get around this fact is that in Python in general, we use uppercase to identify that this is a constant. Um, so we can even do charger cost. Now I know this is not ideal, but this is the way Python works and this is how we work with Python. In other languages, you could be, you can actually type const and have a uh, charger cost like that. But in Python, it just does not work like that. So in fact, in most programming languages, like even when you work with PHP, even though you do declare const, the traditional way uh, of writing it, it is in uppercase using snake, snake case, but all uppercase. So uh, a lot of the times what people do as well is they usually put constants first because they know that's never going to change and it's always at the top. In fact, what people do as well is they could take this and put it in another file and reference it, but we won't complicate things. So in this case, we know the, the code is going to run every time we uh, fill out the form it's going to take phone costs, charger costs, and we're going to know, okay, those are constants, and customer first name is going to be variable. And let's, let's take it a little bit further here. You may have come across this. What is your name? And if we ran it now, it'll ask us, what is our name? Raval, and we'll hit enter, and it prints out string. So every time this code runs, Somebody might type in something different for what is your name, and you can see how a variable here makes sense. Because in the form, what is your name? We can have, what is your name here? We can say, um, would you like to purchase a phone? We can say, purchased. Okay. And uh, 
would you like to purchase a phone? And maybe we instead of we can do print customer first name print purchased. So we can say, would you like to purchase a phone? And we run this again and we say, what is your name? Uh, let's go with Tom. Would you like to purchase a phone? Yes. Tom, yes. And the phone cost just won't change. You'll never ask the person to input a phone cost because you don't want them having control over that. So that is how, that's the difference between variables and constants. I hope that using this example, you, it has made a difference in your head. If it hasn't, just leave a comment below and explain to me why you're confused and I can help you out. So I hope this video helped you understand what variables and constants are. If you want to learn more, keep watching the series, like and subscribe. We're going to be following the GCSE syllabus and next is going to be inputs, outputs and operators. See you next time.